All right, welcome back. In today's video, we actually aren't doing an analysis. Instead, I'm just going to talk about what I think is to come or what could be in this game this year or in the future. I had this idea brought up to me by a few viewers by now, and I decided it would be much easier to make a video of it, and I can add pictures and stuff along the way. Also note that I'm going to be talking about factions that aren't part of my usual collective of knowledge, so forgive me if I get something wrong, and feel free to discuss it with me down below. I would also like to just in general hear about your guys' thoughts on the new heroes, like what classes would you like to see, what new weapons would you like to see, do you like heroes that come with a personality attached to them, like all of last year's heroes. Like I said, this isn't your usual analysis and I want it to be more of a discussion. So let's begin with what we know for this year of content, that being year 4. So unlike other years, we had two heroes a season, which was too much in my opinion, then we had one hero a season, which I think was the right amount in my opinion. Now we only have one hero every other season, meaning we didn't get a hero this season, but we will get one next season. A lot of people are making the assumption, myself included, that due to the current imbalance of how many heroes there are per faction, that both heroes are going to be Wulin heroes to make sure that there's an equal amount for each faction. Some also think that they might do this to make sure the whole roster is completely full so that they can end the game's content updates by the end of year 4. I disagree with that last part just due to the fact that I don't think that they would be putting as much effort into everything they've been doing so far with the UI and gameplay updates to even them still doing the Warriors Den updates. They've been undeniably improving this game ever since the beginning of last year. So it seems weird to me that they would throw it all the way at the end of this year. But really, who knows? Maybe that could be the case. There are also some people that want there to be a 4 on or 2, which I just think is a ridiculous idea, but that would take a whole other video to explain, so let me get back on track. So when it really comes down to it, what I would like to see and what is probably going to come are two different things. But let's talk about our options of what kind of Wulin heroes we might see in the near future. Now when the Year 3 Pass teaser came out, there was a lot of speculations on what hero was supposed to be what and what their weapons were supposed to be. We had some people thinking that BP was going to be a legionary, which I can kind of understand just due to how the shield looked on the teaser, but the sword looks nothing like a Gladius or Spatha, so that didn't sell me as much as just a normal knight with a shield. But along with that speculation, we had some people, including myself, that thought the straight bladed sword was going to be a Jin and that it was going to be a Wulin assassin. I had my own thought process going on in my head opposed to what other people were thinking, and this was important because when they announced that all the heroes were slated to be exclusively heavy heroes, I was very confused. The Jin is specifically a light and agile weapon worn by people with nobility. Because of how light it is and how effective it is at self-defense, this works as a perfect weapon to carry as a sidearm. The fighting technique that you use for this sword is a little bit like a rapier, so that means quick and decisive thrusts along with very nimble cuts thrown in as well. Do you get what I'm getting at here? This by no means says heavy at all to me. Yet there were still some people who were adamant that this was a Jien. To be fair, uh, one, Zan Hu ended up not even being a heavy character for some reason and ended up being labeled as a hybrid. I don't know why. Two, if you watch my Sun Da video where I perform some of Sun Da's moves, then you'll already know that the Chang Dao or Miao Dao are more or less curved like saber blades and aren't straight, as far as I can tell from the sources that I've looked at. So when Ubisoft was peddling a straight Chinese sword, they really threw us all for a loop. Three, every single Wu Lin is all about agility. Even Jiang Jun is dancing around throwing out more dodge attacks than any other heavy on the roster. But speaking of dancing around, this leads us to the last and most difficult point. Number four, technically Tiandi fights like he's using a Jian more than he's using a Dadao. Now, I don't have an analysis for Tiandi and I don't particularly have one planned for the near future, so I'm going to quickly cover some points about Tiandi and I don't want to turn this into an analysis about him. But what really shows me that they wanted to make his style like using a Jian in mind are a few things from how he holds his sword behind him when he's idle, which is usually the position someone would be when they're about to begin a routine using a Jian. Another is how he wields his sword with one hand rather than two. This is especially noticeable for his light attack like his crushing counter dodge lights. This looks like a strike that you would see with the Jian rather than you would with a Dadao just because of how a Dadao is meant to be used. Don't get me wrong, I'm not saying you can't use a Dadao with one hand, but comparatively to other swords, it's going to be much more of a difficult time. Also, there's a reason the Dadao has such a long handle. It's meant to give you more leverage when wielding it with both hands. Now, Tiandi does do attacks with both hands on the sword and some with just one hand, and that's because he has a sort of mixed fighting style between using a Dadao and using a sword that's light enough like a Jian to doing thrusts and cuts. That's a whole nother discussion that we can save for when I do a Tiandi analysis, but for now we can move on. 
Another thing that sort of threw us for a loop was when the year three heroes were announced was the fact that the Chang Dao that we saw had a cord or ribbon attached to the end cap of the hilt. Now, we actually didn't even get to see that in the live version of the game, so I don't know why it was shown under the promotion art, but that is also something that you would see frequently on a Jian, which, again, Tiandi also has a ribbon on all of his Dadaos as well. Now, I'm not saying that you can't have a ribbon on a Dadao. In fact, I'm fairly certain that's what the ring on the end of the Dadao is for. And also, I'm not saying I'm anything close to an end-all, be-all expert of Asian martial arts. That being said, from what I have seen, this, in my opinion, has a lot of similarities that shouldn't be ignored. If you happen to be a practitioner of, I believe it's Tai Chi that does all the routines with the Jian, regardless, if you have any experience with the Jian that you would like to share, feel free to leave it down below, I'd love to hear about it. So back on track, i like to see the Jian added to this game, but I don't know how combat would work. I'm thinking maybe like an assassin that has the same fundamentals of Tian Di, but quicker. Low damage lights, akin to Shaolin's side light combo where he gets three consecutive hits. I'm no game dev or competitive fighting game analyst. I'm just kind of spitballing here, so if you have any ideas on what can be used for a thrust based sword that also applies cuts, let me hear them. As for what this hero's attire would look like, honestly something like Xian Hu's, if not fancier in my opinion. Again, this nimble weapon should represent someone who is of noble status or someone with power. This isn't a peasant's weapon to say the least. Zhan Hu really captured that idea with their outfits between looking like an aristocrat to looking like a military officer. So I think that hero would be a great place to draw inspiration from. Let's move on to other weapon options before we get caught up just talking about one. So for the next weapons, I'm going to speak in very broad strokes as my knowledge of Chinese history isn't the strongest. So forgive me if I get some facts wrong. One weapon that I was thinking of would be the Chinese Fu, which is an axe. From what I've read, this axe, like most axes, originated from chopping wood, but then found its way onto the battlefield. From what I've seen, this axe could be very tall, almost like a European pole axe, or almost like a Dane axe, and is very heavy in weight. Another option would be what is called a Ji. This is a type of dagger axe that, along with a spike on the top, works almost like a Chinese halberd. I bring these ones up because I think the Wu Lin should have at least one hero that doesn't revolve around dodge attacks. Like, Think about it for a second. The only hero that might get away without dodge attacking is probably Nuxia, but Nuxia is not in a very good place by themselves already. So it would be interesting to see them do their take on another true heavy warrior. Also, the Wulin faction is still the only faction right now with only one heavy, so that would fill the gap for that as well. As for armor, Ubisoft usually does the armor for the Wulin very well compared to the other factions. There is always something for everyone, I'd like to think. Just like how Zan Hu has their plain clothes, but there is also one of full armor as well. And then you can mix and match to your heart's content. So long as they keep that up, I don't think I'd be disappointed in whatever direction they decide to go with. Next we have the Qiang, or Mao, which is, in short, a spear. Qiang being an average spear, Mao being the heavy spear from what I understand. Whichever one they decide to go with, I'm down. Obviously, the spear has been a popular weapon throughout the ages regardless of what civilization you're looking at, and China is definitely not an exception to it. There are many different types of spears that have been used throughout many different dynasties of China, so really, take your pick. According to a colloquial group known as the King of Weapons, this, along with the Jian, would complete the four essential weapons of warfare. That being the Qiang, the Gun, better known as the Staff, the Dao, and the Jian. God, I hope I'm not messing up these pronunciations. <laughs> so how they would implement a weapon such as this, I don't know. But it is a possible option. I think that weapons stated before have much more probable chance of becoming a reality than this one because I feel like the spear in of itself isn't unique enough to take a spot on the roster. That's just my opinion on it though. Maybe they could make some type of assassin character with a short spear and it'll have all the dodge attacks in the world. Who knows? I feel like I've been saying assassin a lot because it's been a while since we've gotten an assassin class hero and I feel like that's coming. I'm not one who plays assassins. I like heroes that are either supportive or have a strong defense, but that's just me and I support getting a new assassin in the game. Don't ever feel alone assassin players. I support you. All right, enough messing around. Last option I'm going to give would be the Chinese Dao with the rattan shield. Mind you, this is not the Da Dao like the Tiandi uses, although they're often confused and mixed together. So really, it's a shield character, and I feel like this might be coming as well. 
just because this would be a great way to kick off adding the Wu Lin to the faction war. The symbol for each faction has to do with the shields they have, and what better way to promote this than actually adding a Wu Lin hero with a shield? Granted the samurai don't have a shield hero, but besides that the other factions do. Maybe they should add a shield hero that isn't a heavy, as the only one that we have like that right now would be Valkyrie, and if you want to be really technical, Gladiator even though he's technically using it wrong. That being said, I feel like there are more than enough people who are fed up with shield oriented heroes, so maybe this wouldn't be a good choice, I don't know. <laughs> so this is going to be it for the Wulin hero speculation. There are honestly many more weapons that came out of China. And honestly, my Chinese history is not the best, so for people that are really well versed in Chinese warfare, let me hear your thoughts. I try to keep it with weapons that are within the Ming Dynasty, because as far as I can tell with the other Wulin heroes, that's roughly where they all are conceptualized from. Anyways, I'm going to now go work on a night speculation and talk about the heroes that I'd like to see from there, even though we may or may not even get more knights. Regardless, if you have any questions, comments, concerns, or hero concepts that you would like to share with me or that you would like my opinion on, feel free to leave it down below. With that, I hope you have a great day. Peace.